Hello and welcome to Bitmoji Classroom 101. My name is Tiara Denson, admin for Bitmoji Craze for Educators. A little bit about myself. I am currently a third grade teacher at Mumford Elementary in Mumford, Alabama. I have a bachelor's degree in business administration and a master's degree in elementary education. In this video, I have compiled a series of step-by-step -step tutorials. This is what I am covering. All, the, all these tutorials help me along the way. Any links that I mention, I will post them in the description below at the end of the video. To get started, I have covered the basic needs first. I then cover the essential needs needed to complete and share your Bitmoji classroom. Let's get started with the first tutorial you will need to begin your Bitmoji journey. Hello, so in today's tutorial, I am going to show you how to download and use the Bitmoji app and Bitmoji extension. Okay, so I am going to show you how to download the Bitmoji app from your phone, and then I'm going to show you how to download the Bitmoji extension on your computer. Um, you will have to have the Bitmoji app first before you are able to access the avatars on the extension that is located on your computer. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go to the App Store and I am using an iPhone. So for, you know, everyone else that may have an Android, um, it would probably be the same step. So it is probably not called the App Store, maybe called PlayStation or, or Play Store or something like that. But when I get to the App Store, I'm going to type in Bitmoji. Wait for it to come up right here. You see Bitmoji, it says open because my app is already on my phone, but if not, it would say get, and then you would tap it and download it. And then from there, what you would have to do is log in. You're gonna log in with a with your Snapchat account because all the Snapchat account and your um, Bitmoji accounts all need to be the same so that everything syncs. And um, if you don't want a Snapchat account, then you can always log in with your um, email login but you still need to make sure that all your logins are the same so that everything will sync so when you get logged in the first thing it's going to do is ask you to create an avatar and the avatar is going to be a you know a man or a woman you pick whichever one you want once you do that it's going to make you um just go through the process of creating that avatar with the skin tone um, you can pick any di different skin tone tone that you want um, hair color, hairstyle, hair treatment, all these things down here at the bottom you will go through to pick or create your avatar. Once you are done with that, there's a, um, on the clothes hanger where you can pick outfits. If you pick any of these outfits, you cannot remove anything from the outfit or it will remove the whole thing. You can change the colors on it, but you cannot change individual pieces of the outfit. <clears throat> Once you are done with that and you've gone through all the other steps um if you see the little you see the little closet down there that stores all of your outfits that you've used or picked in the past so if you want to change for um a certain situation or a certain occasion you can always go back and pick that outfit it'll be available for you so that you don't have to go through those steps again and then once you get done with that you're going to click the um check mark save your avatar and everything is saved for you and then you can search different stickers um whatever you search like happy it'll come up um, i know a lot of you are always looking for those um bitmojis with no words you would type in pose and all those different um bitmojis would um, come up and then like if I saw one that I wanted I could click on it my options come down at the bottom to where I can send it in a text message I can airdrop it I always use the airdrop function when I want to airdrop or send something to my MacBook this is why I like um, to use 
Apple products because everything syncs and it's a lot easier. You can copy it and then paste it somewhere else. Um, you can save the image. You can do a lot of different things um, with that image. And then after you're done with that, you've saved your avatar. You are now ready to use your Bitmoji extension on your phone, on your computer, which, um, like I said, anytime you want to change anything, you have to change it from the app, and then it, it um, syncs to your extension. So always do that first before you want to change an outfit or, or do something like that. Um, and so now I'm going to show you how to download your Bitmoji extension on your computer. So to download your Bitmoji extension, you're gonna to go to Google and you're gonna search Bitmoji extension. And it's gonna be the very first one that pops up. I'm using Google Chrome, so mine says Bitmoji Google Chrome. Then here, your Chrome web store is gonna open up. And right here where mine says remove from Chrome, it's saying that because I've already added it. But in your case, you would click that and just add that um, extension to your um, computer. And then from there, your um, extension, the, the little extension is gonna pop up right here beside your, your web browser. And so you'll just be able to easily click on it whenever you need to access a Bitmoji. So if I was going to open up a, um, a blank presentation, I would simply go right here to my Bitmoji extension, click on it. And I'm just gonna use one that I've searched to say you want to look up po a certain pose. And it is taking a second to come up. There it is. And then I want this one. You can simply click and drag it and it will pop up in your um, Google Slides. Now remember, if you want to change your avatar, you want to change their clothes, that you have to use your Bitmoji app on your phone to do that and then it will automatically sync to your extension. I hope this has helped you learn how to download your Bitmoji app to your phone and also download your Bitmoji extension to your computer. In this tutorial I will show you how to create your Bitmoji classroom. So the first thing that you are going to do is once you have your um, slides open you're going to highlight these boxes and delete them. Then you're going to go to insert image and search the web. The first thing that we want to do is we want to find a um, background. So we're going to search floor and wall background. And however you want your um, classroom to look, you can pick your background based off of that. I just want a very basic one. Then you'll size it. Okay, then I will go back over here since my um, insert and search the web tab is still open. I will go back over here and I want to add a bookshelf. So I'm going to type in transparent bookshelf and typing in the word transparent, uh, typing in the word transparent helps take away that white background that would be in the picture. Then we're going to drag and insert it. Resize it. Okay. Then I want to add some books to my bookshelf. So I would go up to Google search. Um, type in, say I want to do a Dr. Seuss book. And click images. 
and there's a walk it in my pocket so I'm going to right click over that copy the image go back to my slide right click click paste then I would just resize my book for it to fit on my shelf Okay. Then say I want to add a sofa or a couch. Drag it over. Resize it but I don't like the color or I don't, you know, like the color of that couch or think it goes with my picture. So what I would do is right click, go to format options, recolor, and go down till I find the perfect color. Let's do gray, that's perfect. And then just, you know, resize it as needed. I want to add a rug. Resize it. For it to fit perfectly. And if you don't like the color on that, you can do the follow the same instructions to change that. Okay, let's do, um, what if I, say if I want to just add a whiteboard, I'll go up to shapes. insert my shape here and you can just size it then you have your board up there you can insert text box Miss Simpson's class and just add it to the board Size it however you want to. Change the font if you would like. And then you would just repeat those steps to add anything else or other things that you may want to add um, to your classroom. I hope in this tutorial, I will show you how to add links and animated GIFs to your Google slide. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to add a link from say BrainPop or iXL or another web um, browser or web link that you are wanting to add to your Google slide. So in my case, I am going to use BrainPop um, because I use BrainPop all the time in my classroom. So I want to make it where it's, they just click on one of these images and it takes them to that particular assignment in BrainPop. So I already have pulled up just a random um, BrainPop lesson that I want to add. And this one's called um, traditional animation. So what I would do is find that, you know, whatever in BrainPop, and then I'm going to go up here and just copy this link. And then I'm going to go back to my Google slide and I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to make sure that this particular image that I want is highlighted. And I'm going to go to insert link. And I'm going to paste it and then apply. And so then that link, as you see, is there. And so when the students click on it, that link will pop, that particular assignment will pop up in BrainPop. 
Now I am going to show you how to add a presentation or a um, virtual classroom from another classroom that you've made. So I already have one made. Say if I have an assignment, a task or a list of assignments for the week or something like that and it's in a different presentation, then what I would do is go to that presentation, which is this is my assignments that I have for my students each week. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to use Publish to Web. And I'm going to use Publish to Web so that when they you know, click on it, it doesn't change anything. They can't move anything, but then if it has links or anything, they will be able to still click on those because here on my bookshelf, it does have a link. So I'm going to go to File, Publish to Web, and usually it'll pop up first and ask, are you sure you want to publish? And you'll say yes, and then you're going to copy this link. For me, I'm on a MacBook, so I would use Command-C. You would use whatever is um, for the computer that you're using. Then I'm going to go back to my original presentation and say when they... Um, click on these books it'll take them to that so then I'll click on the books and then I'm gonna to go to insert link I'm gonna paste it in and apply so when they click on this particular link that other presentation will pop up now I want to show you how to add an animated gif or gif as some may say to your slide um, say you have a window and you want to add some fancy little movements or, you know, anything like that. So what you would do is you're going to have to pull up a new web browser and then you would go to Jiffy or Giphy.com. In this case, I do have it pulled up, but it would be G-I-P-H-Y.com. It would come up and you would just search whatever you want it to pull up. I'm going to search cows a whole bunch come up you can just pick whichever one you're going to click on it click copy link and then you're going to use the second one you're going to copy it then you're going to go back to your google slide you're going to go to insert image and you're going to pick by URL. And then you're going to add it. And click insert. Now it's here. Now I want it to go behind my window, of course. So you would just kind of resize it till it would fit in there. That looks like that's pretty perfect. And then I'm going to click on my window because the window needs to be in front of the, the image. And then I'm going to go over to Arrange, Order, and click Bring to Front. And then you still may have to um, resize it just a little bit for it to actually fit in there. But once it's in there, perfect. So now if you're looking outside, you would see the cows running around outside. And so I've showed you how to add a link from like a web or another program. I've showed you how to add a link from a separate presentation. And then I showed you how to add a GIF. So let's click on this link just to make sure that it works. And it does. Go back. I want to get to a different presentation on it it's going to pull up in present mode because that's what you want for your students you don't want them to be able to move anything around they should be able to go through look at their daily schedule for each day all these different little things their reading assignment learning target all that is available for them and remember i told you that there was a link in the first slide so here if they click on this image or this bookshelf it should take them to the link that I had in here. 
and it does. I added the same brain pop. So now I hope that this was helpful and that you are able to now add links and GIFs to your Google slide. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to link Google slides. I know there are a lot of questions about um, when you have several slides and you click a um, button or an image on one slide and it automatically takes you to another slide. So in this video, I will show you how to do that. Okay, so to show you how to um, link your slide to another slide, I am first going to show you what I am talking about or what your um, intentions probably are when you um, are trying to link your slides. So I'm going to put it in present mode and kind of show you what I already created. Um, and then I'm going to actually show you what to do. So in present mode, my first screen says matching the correct sentence. So when I click down here where it says click here to begin, my slide is automatically going to go to the next slide or my thing is going to automatically go to the next slide. And then when I get to this slide, it says which picture matches the sentence. And it says my ladybug has six black dots. So if I was presenting this to my students, they would read the sentence and then they would click on one of these images. Well, this image right here is going to if it's, it's incorrect so i have it linked to where it is going to make a sound telling them or showing them that it's incorrect and then when they click the correct one it will automatically shift them to the next slide so just say if i'm making a mistake and i click this one and it makes that and i have a separate tutorial that i will be doing on how i got that image to make that sound when i clicked on it and then when I click that, that is what it does. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to go down here. I've already, I already have um, two slides that I'm going to work with to show you since they have that. But what I did was I, um, first to get my images, I clicked on insert images and then I searched the web. And when I got to that, I just typed in ladybug cartoon and I had all these different types of ladybugs come up. And then I just picked two of the images that I wanted to add to my slide. So to, um, since this is a slide that has that animated sound, meaning that it's correct, incorrect, this is the one that is correct, which I want to link it to the next slide. So when the students click on it, it will go to that slide. So to do that, I would click over the image itself and you can either click command K or you can click insert and go down to link. So I'm going to click command K and then this second little screen pops up. Well, right here it says slides in this presentation. I'm going to click on that and then all my other options are going to come up. Well, in this case, I want it to link to slide seven because I want it to go to the next one. So then I will click slide seven and click apply. So then now you see it says slide seven. It automatically when you click or when it's in present mode, it will automatically go to that next slide. So then I'm going to go to my next slide because when my students are done, I want them to automatically go back to the, the beginning um, or the first slide. So in this case, I want it to say return to the beginning. So I'm going to insert a text box and go ahead and write that or type that. So return to first slide. I'm going to change the color on it and the font. I love Luckiest Guy. It's like my one of my favorite fonts. Okay. And then while I have it highlighted, I am going to do Command K. And then I, in this case, want it to link back to the first slide and then I'm going to apply it. So then when they click on it, it should link back and it changed the color. I can just change it back, click on that and delete that.
I don't know why it did that. I, it did it before and I just kind of changed the color on it. So you can just change the color um, to your liking. So then when I click on it now, it um, it should take the students or whomever back to the first slide. So I'm going to click on this one and then I'm going to go to present mode just to make sure um, or show you exactly what it'll do. Okay, so if I was wrong, it would do that. And then when I click here, it should take me back to my first slide. And that is how you um, link your slide. Hey guys, so I'm going to show you how to remove the white background from an image. I am going to change this up just a little bit. So while doing that, I will show you um, how to remove that white background. So the first thing that I am going to do is um, I started searching for red. I put transparent chair in hopes that I would find one of the ones that already had the background removed. But in this case, it doesn't because I want this particular one. So what I will have to do first is I'm going to have to hover over the particular picture that I want. I'm going to um, right click and I'm going to save the image. Now I'm going to save it as red chair so that I will know how to find it. And I'm saving it to my desktop. So then what I am going to do, because I know that this is going to have a white background and um, I can go back to my image here and click insert image upload from computer and then here's my red chair and then click open and the background is white I don't want that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to remove dot bg and I'm going to upload that image and here's red chair Okay, and then so now it, it's the the background is removed for me. Then I'm going to download it. Okay, and so it's downloaded and then I'm going to go back. And then I'm going to go to insert image, upload from computer. And it should now be the correct one when it's inserted. Okay, so it did not. Let me just drag it. It's at the bottom, so I can just drag it. Okay, and there it is. I don't want this green one, so I am going to remove that. Um, and then I can just play around with the sizing and all that. I don't like the way it's turned, so if I want to um, flip my chair to a different angle, um, I need to just make sure that it's, it's highlighted. Go to Arrange, Rotate, and I'm going to flip it horizontally because I want it to be um, facing this way instead of the way that it was facing in the first place. But that is how you... Um, remove the background from an image. Okay guys, so I am going to show you a, a quicker way to remove the white background from a picture. Um, I know that a lot of you use remove.bg and some other programs to help you remove the white background. But if you have a MacBook, um, there is a, a easier way that you can remove your background. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to um, find the picture that I want to use. And these pictures are going to come from me using my phone or using the Bitmoji app from my phone and sending those pictures to my MacBook. So I'm not going to use the pictures that's on the extension because some of those or most of those are already um, the background. The white background is already removed. So I am going to go to my folder where my pictures are. And I'm going to use this one because this is the one that I want to put into my um, virtual classroom that I've created. So when you pull the picture up, 
you're going to go to this little suitcase here. And when it comes up, you're going to click on this little wand. And then you're going to just hover over or drag over all of what you want to remove. Okay, and then once it's like that, you'll hit delete and convert. So then that takes away the background. Now, if I want to take away these little circles inside of here, I could delete those. You just would drag whatever you want to, um, to delete. Now, if I also, sorry, this is all coming. I don't want to save it. So now if I also want to use this picture, but I don't want the words, like the it's popping words, you would come over to this first little box where the arrow is, click the drop down box, and then you're going to go down to the lasso selection. And then you're going to come over and you're going to just circle over every piece that you want removed. And then click delete. Now I still have some left, so then I would just circle over again and again until everything that I want gone is removed. Now I do see a little bit of white here. I want that removed, so then I will go back over to my wand, drag inside, and click delete. Now that particular um, the background and everything that I want removed is gone. If you want to save it um, as a copy, you can. I'll just put TD just because, but it's going to save to my, it'll be on my desktop. Then I would, um, because I want this to go into my virtual classroom, I'm going to copy it. So then I would just go up here to edit and copy, or you can use control C. Then I would go over to my classroom and then do edit and paste and it's in there and then you can just resize it to whatever you want because um, my intent was just to I want just a cute little decoration on my board on my whiteboard and that is how you easily remove the white background and wording or anything else um, from a picture if you have a Mac. In this tutorial, I will be showing you several different ways that you are able to share your Google file. There are several different ways to share a, um, a classroom or a document with others. And so I'm going to show you um, those ways to share, um, which include um, making a force copy, sharing an, edit co an editable copy, and then sharing a view only copy or um, sharing it in present mode. So to get started, um, to share using the share option that we have, if you notice here, when I click on it and I pull up, it pulls up to this. And here um, it shows where I've shared with my students because this is a, um, a template that I've used for virtual learning. Um, and it, I've shared assignments with my students each week using this template. So here I've shared it and I've shared it as a viewer. So when the students click on it, they can only view it. They cannot edit or move anything within that presentation. And if I wanted to change that, um, before sharing, I could change it to editor where then they would be able to edit the post or um, commenter and then that when, that's when they would be able to like make comments on the post. Um, and when you do this, you would add up here who you wanted to share it with and then down at the bottom you would get that link. Now when you get that link, if you just copy this link it's going to copy it just as it is and like right here it's only going to share it with people that are within my school or my district so to change that i would click the change option and right here it would say restricted or anyone with link i would want to change that to anyone with this link so that i could share it with parents or um, other people outside of my district that would need access to it and then once I do that, 
um, then I would just simply copy the link and then click done. And then from there, you can go to a different web browser or you know to an email or wherever and share that link with other people. So to show you how that would look if I shared that link, I'm going to go to a new incognito window. And this is a, a private browser. Paste the link. And then when it, other people would see it like this on the screen, it would be a view only file. So they would not have access to it or they would not be able to, um, you know, edit any of the um, slides. So now if we go back to this and um, if I wanted to say share my classroom with someone, but I wanted to make them make it force them to make a copy. So what I would do is I would go up here to this, the, the, URL, the URL, and then I would remove this last part to where it says edit. And I'm going to put type in copy and hit enter. This then forces them to have to make a copy. So then I would share this link and then they would have to click on make a copy in order for it to become theirs. And then I wouldn't have to worry about anybody messing up my original copy. So then now if I did not want to do the forced copy, say I wanted it to be in a the view or present mode, I would erase copy. I would type in present and that um, if in present mode, they don't have access to making a copy or anything like that. It is strictly in a present mode for them to um, view the file and then it would just change slides as you scroll or click on it. And so those are the ways that you would share your Google file. So in the previous video, I showed you how to share your file with others, including your students. In this video, I am going to show you how you would make a copy if those files were shared with you. So we're going to go over to this window where I already have each file pulled up. So we're going to start with the force copy file. If this file is shared with you or if a file is shared with you, you would simply click make a copy. Once you make a copy, this file is now yours to edit. You can change the name up here or you can keep it as it is, it is your choice. Now I'm going to show you how to make a copy if it is a view only file. Sometimes when files are shared this way, you have here where it says that you can request edit access. Usually if someone shares that with you like that, they don't want you to request access, they usually want you to just view the file. But if you do wanna make this file your own, you would simply go up here to file, click make a copy and you would click entire presentation. Now you can do selected slides, but usually it's just best to click entire presentation. Here you would rename it, whatever it is that you want to rename it, or you could leave it as it is. And click OK. Now this file is yours as well and you are able to edit it to your liking and change things as you would want. Up here, you can also change the name again or you can leave it as it is. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that each of my step-by-step -step tutorials were helpful. 
If you have not already, be sure you save our master list for more helpful tutorials created by each of our admin and moderators in our group.